I'm logged into SQL Developer as Sys, and I have a SQL script file that I've put together here for a demo. Let's walk through the code together, and I'll show you how easy it is. This is really a best kept secret. The fact that SQL Developer allows you to do most DBA stuff, it's pretty crazy. In fact, let me stretch out this connections window. Once you've authenticated, as long as you've got SysDBA privilege and you can see everything, you'll see if we come down almost to the bottom, right above Recycle Bin, we have a scheduler node. And then in there we have subnodes for jobs, programs, schedules, etc. So you can actually build out your jobs without having to know PLSQL. And I'll show you in a minute, you get the best of both worlds, actually. When you use the GUI, it'll actually show you the PLSQL. And of course, you can copy out that PLSQL and put it in your own scripts. You can take advantage of that. Pretty cool. These comments up here just are to remind me that we want to build our jobs from the bottom up. Build your schedule, build your program, your specific steps, and then do the job as a container object. Let's say we've got this end of day idea from 5.30 to 6.30. We've got a window defined, and that window in turn is associated with a resource manager plan. So we've got the environment for our after hours job laid down. The schedule, the schedule, <laughs> I keep tripping over words, is what the job uses to run. And I'm going to create a schedule here called Sketch End of Work that runs daily the same thing. The comment run at 5 p.m. every weekday. It's the same interval as what we saw with the window. So I'm going to select this code, run it in the context of sys, anonymous block completed, so that's cool. And that's all there is to creating the schedule. Of course, it's easier to do that in the graphical user interface if you're not comfortable with PLSQL. I think I've told you before, if, you, if I have wet your interest, even though I'm not teaching you PLSQL in this course, we at Pluralsight have PLSQL training that's excellent, so make sure to go in the library and check that out, please. Next, let's create a program. There are different options for programming. PLSQL block is just one. I'm creating one called test underscore program. And all this PLSQL block is going to do is run a table stats job against the HR employees table. This is a very simple example. There's an enabled flag, obviously comments, select these lines, anonymous block completed, fine. So now that we have the schedule and we have the work itself, we can create the job by running dbmsscheduler.createJob. And notice that we're just plugging and chugging. We specify a job name and then a program name and a schedule name. And it's very modular, like I said. Pretty cool. And then I go on here to show you how to create a window programmatically. That's all well and good. To do the job, let's do that graphically. First, let's open up schedules. Let me right click and refresh to make sure we see everything. There's the schedule we just created, end of work. And if you want to look at its metadata, you can right click, edit, and that will open up the graphical interface. This is really cool. And if we wanted to create a schedule, it's the same thing. Right click schedule, new schedule, give it a name. I probably shouldn't have a space in there. And then the repeat interval, notice that you can use the graphical interface here to make your choices, start date, end date, and check this out. Boom. You go to the SQL tab, and it does all the code for you. Isn't that awesome? And then we can select that, do a control C or however you want to copy it to the clipboard, and reuse it. That is so awesome. Similarly, for programs, we have our test program that we just created. To do our job, right click, and you can do new job or new job wizard. There's even a wizard here, so let's select that. I'm going to call this after hours job. We'll enable it. Give it a brief description. Now, job class. I haven't defined a job class yet, have I? So I can just leave it at default job class here and then later come in and reassign if I decide that I want to add the job as a job class. Remember, job classes are cool because you can actually plug in job classes as consumer groups. When you create a job class, you assign it to a database resource manager consumer group, okay? The type of job, check this out. PLSQL block, chain, stored procedure, remote stored procedure, executable, script, a lot of flexibility. Now, I could actually type my PLSQL right here or just paste it in. Because I've modularized, I'm going to choose named program, and then I can select my program right here. Isn't that cool? When to execute a job, I can build a schedule right here, but that's not what we're doing. We best practice is we're going to modularize, so check this out. I can do either a schedule or a window. I'll just choose the schedule that I created called End of Work. Isn't that awesome? Click Next. You can run these locally, remotely, or on multiple boxes just with a simple tick of the dropdown. We can pass in job arguments if we want to. We can customize alerting if we have an SMTP email server. Bunch of properties that give 
parallelism, time zone, restartable, fairly self-explanatory metadata. And then we have our summary page with a run of the PLSQL that's responsible for building that job. Isn't that cool? So there you have it. And you can rest assured that anything we create here in SQL Developer is available to us when we go back into Cloud Control, and we can take a look at it there as well.